Deputy um, I call Senator Reynolds. Uh, thank you very much, Madam Acting Deputy President. I too rise to speak in support of the Fair Work Registered Organisations Amendment Bill. This bill implements the government's election commitment outlined in the Policy for Better Transparency and Accountability of Registered Organisations. It will enhance the accountability and transparency of registered organisations by broadly aligning the obligations of office holders, penalties and powers of the regulator within the Corporations Act 2001. And having a look at the detail of this bill, it absolutely blows my mind how anybody in this chamber could possibly not support the provisions of this bill. And I think the fact that so many people on the other side are not supporting this, to me, very personally, demonstrates so much of what is wrong with politics today. Since the introduction of the uh, 2013 bill, the Royal Commission uh, into Trade Union Governance and Corruption, the Royal Commission, has been established. The Royal Commission is, amongst other th areas, inquiring into slush funds and other similar funds and entities established by or related to the affairs of trade unions. In its interim report, the Royal Commission made findings in relation to the conduct of officers of registered organisations, including that the maximum penalties for breaches of general duties in relation to financial management are too low, that breaches of officers' duties are significant and widespread, and in some instances that there is a deliberate disregard for the law. And again, how possibly it is in, in workers' interests for the trade unions to be, to be allowed to get away with this sort of behaviour for so long. These interim findings of the Royal Commission, combined with the Health Services Union saga, illustrate the need for measures proposed in this bill. The bill increases civil penalties and introduces criminal offences for serious breaches of officers' duties, similar to those applicable under the Corporations Act. The bill also establishes the Registered Organisations Commission as independent but within the office of the Fair Work Ombudsman. Most importantly, and especially for those opposites who claim this to be a partisan venture, the policy principles behind this bill are supported by a range of Labor luminaries, your colleagues and ex-colleagues. Ex so who have we got supporting this? Hmm. Who have we got? We have Simon Crean. Yes, we've got Martin Ferguson, we've got Robert McClelland, we've got even Paul Howes Ian Cram and Ian Cambridge, all doyens of the Labor movement and all who are saying this is the right thing to do, and it's the right thing to do because it's the right thing to do by union members. But this bill also addresses concerns raised in the federal court by His Honour Justice Anthony North, who said that the penalties under the existing legislation are beneficially low to wrongdoers. That means people are not getting penalised as they should for misuse of union funds and other misbehaviour. So this legislation will bring penalties in line with the Corporations Act. So it brings it in line with the Corporations Act because we believe there is absolutely no skerrick of difference between a dodgy company director who's ripping off shareholders and a dodgy union boss ripping off members. And again, when you look at it that way, you think, how on earth can the people opposite, who say that they represent the workers and that they're fighting for the workers' rights, cannot even give workers the same rights that shareholders have to protect them? I think it is an utter, utter disgrace. And I also want to absolutely stress that the only people who have anything to fear from this bill are those who are doing the wrong thing by the workers of this country. And I also want to reaffirm that the government firmly believes that the vast majority of officers of registered organisations absolutely do the right thing. Now, this bill was previously voted down in the Senate, but the primary reasons that the opposition opposed the bill are in fact actually issues enshrined in the legislation as it currently stands today and are in full force. And in fact, something again that just is quite astounding to me is the onerous disclosure obligations that currently exist were in fact imposed by the Leader of the Opposition when he was the Minister for Workplace Relations, and they will be removed under this government's bill. So, Having a look at this bill and having a look at some of the history of this bill, I really had to start wondering why the Leader of the Opposition and those opposite would oppose these provisions. And Madam Acting Deputy President, in my short time in this place, I've come to appreciate that the louder and more aggressive the blokes on the other side of this chamber get, 
The more you just know, there will be something they will want to hide with all the bluff and the bluster. And interestingly, the loudest in this chamber in my time so far appear to have been ex-trade union officials. A coincidence? We, I know it's pretty hard not to find one, but is that a coincidence or not? Having a look at the facts, my strong and deep suspicion is it is linked and it is no coincidence. So to test this hypothesis, I went back and had a look at the facts, not the rhetoric, had a look at the facts and what is behind this well-worn tactic of those opposite of denying, defending and attacking, deny, defend, attack, deny, defend, attack. But what are they trying to hide behind that? So when I sought to understand why those opposite don't support this bill and support the protections of the workers unions represent, it didn't take long to really understand why those opposite don't support this bill and are now trying so hard to discredit the Royal Commission. And sadly, I had to narrow it down to the top ten reasons that's come out of the Royal Commission because simply time in this chamber would not permit more. Well, Mr Acting Deputy President, if Senator Conroy does not think what I'm about to read out are issues and are issues that every trade unionist and those opposite should not hang their head in shame at the impact on the trade unions, and he might heckle, but let him heckle after I've read out these absolute blatant, horrendous things that are happening against the people you pretend to represent. So it was impossible to rank them because they're all so heinous. However, the first one I identified was CFMEU officials Brian Parker and Darren Greenfield consorted with underworld crime figure George Alex, whose friends and colleagues included Mick Gatto, former Comanchero Bilal Faltruni, senior rebels Baiki, Abzar Sultani, standover man Vasco Boskovsky, recently murdered criminal career, sorry, murdered career criminal Joe Anton and infamous ISIS jihadists Khalid Sharouf and Mohammed El Amar, who did the weight training out of interest in his backyard and joined Alex on a shooting trip shortly before escaping Australia to fight with ISIS. Now you might find that funny. You might find that funny, Senator Conroy, Order. but I think it is an absolute disgrace on behalf of all trade unionists in this country. The second, Comancheros being used as debt collectors as debt collectors for trade unions and the facts assistant commissioner of victorian police steve fontana confirmed that the victorian police had evidence had evidence showing the overall infiltration of the building and construction industry by organized crime he indicated that outlaw motorcycle gangs including the comancheros have been regularly engaged as debt collectors on behalf of the industry Victoria Police is concerned that the methods for debt collection in the industry involve criminal conduct such as assault, threat to assault and intimidation. Presumably, it is trade union members' money that is going to these outlawed motorcycle gangs, including the Comancheros. So that's number two. What's number three? Number three is the construction company pays for Bill Shorten's election campaign director, which he oops, forgot to declare. Mr Shorten accepted a $40,000 donation from construction companies to $40,000 minister from construction companies to pay the wages of his election campaign director in, 20, in 2007. But guess what? He didn't disclose it until how many days do you reckon before the Royal Commission asked him these matters in sworn evidence? Two, that's right. Since 2007 through to this year, he had forgotten to mention $40,000 donation. He also relied on assistance from an AWU staff member to formalise this arrangement, which he also didn't disclose and does not appear to have refunded. Senator Conroy, the truth is the truth, and it might, as much as you might not like Order. hearing this, it is a shame and a disgrace you are now defending it. Ah, but that wasn't it. The Leader of the Opposition also failed to disclose a $12,700 for this worker plus an $11,000 for a part-time campaign Order. worker that was donated by guess which union? The AWU. What a surprise. He only included this in a late disclosure. Again, how many days before the Royal Commission do you think? Two days before the Royal Commission evidence he gave. 
So that's number three. What do we think the fourth absolute disgrace is? Bill Shorten himself cutting workers' conditions. Isn't that somewhat ironic? Trade union members are paying for unions to represent them, and what's he doing? He's doing what I would call dodgy deals to cut their wages. So how did this happen? The Commission heard that under the 2006 Clean Event Agreement, signed under the authority of Bill Shorten as National Secretary of the AWU, workers were deprived of penalty rates, they were deprived of public holiday pay, overtime and shift loadings. This was under a deal authorised by Bill Shorten himself. As Victorian Secretary of the AWU, Bill Shorten also approved an agreement to allow a group of mushroom pickers to be fired and mostly rehired as casual labour. It saved the company millions from the abolition of overtime rates, amongst many other savings. And this from a man who purports to be standing up for the workers of this country. Absolutely disgraceful. So that's number four. What is number five? Number five relates to Borrell. On construction sites in Melbourne, the law is determined by the CFMEU. Pointing to numerous examples of secondary boycotts, cartel behaviour, racketeering, intimidation, illegal black banning, criminal conspiracy, Borrell CEO Mike Kane lashed the CFMEU as an organisation that openly admits it has and will continue to break the law. Kane revealingly stated that on construction sites in Melbourne, the law doesn't apply. The law is determined by the CFMEU. And guess who they employ to do their enforcement? The common chairos. Number six, Bill Shorten's close friend and AWU associate, Caesar Mellon, and also false invoices incidents. The Royal Commission also heard evidence that Caesar Mellon repeatedly issued false invoices to companies marked training, OHS, or similar when they're actually payments for union membership. And these were not just small amounts of money. Any amount of money would be wrong, but this were for hundreds of thousands of dollars. The AWU membership role contained the names of workers and horse racing jockeys who had never agreed to become a member of the union. Mr Mellum also made a side deal in which cleaning company Cleanvent agreed to pay the union $25,000 per year for three years, $75,000 for undisclosed services in order to retain an enterprise agreement that left their workers with substantially worse off award pay rates. That is an absolute disgrace. So that's number six. Number seven of my top ten. Bill Shorten's closest friend, Caesar Mellon, and the Industry 2020 Slush Fund. Yet another sad saga involving them both. The Royal Commission heard evidence of a slush fund, euphemistically entitled Industry 2020, set up by former AWU State Secretary and sitting ALP Victorian MLC, Caesar Mellon. Despite being structurally separate from the AWU, this fund, aka the slush fund, received regular payments from companies which had EBAs with the union. It employed no staff and had no premises of its own. However, all Industry 2020 fundraisers, fundraisers were organised and run by AWU officials using AWU resources. Through these fundraisers, Industry 2020 received contributions from other unions such as the Victorian branch of the NUW. The most high-profile Industry 2020 fundraiser was $550 a head lunchtime function at Flemington Racecourse, addressed by the Deputy Prime Minister, Julia Gillard. So what's number eight on the shame, shame roll? It was the CFMEU receiving leaked details from CBUS members. The private and I say this again, the private details of over 300 construction workers was leaked by the construction industry superannuation fund CBUS to the CFMEU. What a disgrace. As a result of the leaks, construction workers were contacted, they were intimidated and they were threatened by CFMEU officials. And guess who the CFMEU officials employ? The common chairos. One of the CBUS officials who leaked the information to the CFMEU gave evidence 
that she was absolutely terrified of what the New South Wales Secretary of the CFMEU would do to her and her family if she told the Royal Commission the truth about this leak. Well, an organisation like the CFMEU, who uses Comancheros to do their enforcement, I'm, it's absolutely amazing that this woman had the bravery to come forward. So number nine on the roll of shame, John Setka's threats. Allegations were made in the Royal Commission that the CFMEU had threatened contractors at the Pentridge Villas residential development site to sign a CFMEU enterprise agreement and that they had pressured construction workers to join the union or otherwise face being black banned. The developer testified that CFMEU State Secretary John Setka demanded that the concreter, Paul Costa, be kicked off the village site simply because he was related to Daniel Grollo, who Sector hated. Again, utterly disgraceful. So, number 10 on my list, and as I said, I have a very long list, and there are many, many, many more examples. But number 10 is where a police officer arrested former CFMEU official who gives evidence. ACT police arrested a former construction union organiser and previous Labor Party sub-branch president after he admitted to accepting tens of thousands of dollars in payments from tradesmen to help them win work. The CFMEU organiser was arrested after evidence re revealed at the Canberra hearing of the Commission. This was not of the Commission's making. This was evidence he gave himself to the Commission. Mr Kabalu, who was president of the ALP's Dixon Mornington sub-branch in Canberra at the time when he was allegedly involved in corruption, denied the cash payments, constituted a bribe. When he resigned as the ALP sub-branch president, he was replaced with, guess who? Another union official from the CFMEU, who has also been the subject of adverse allegations at the Commission. Again, pattern of behaviour time and time and time again. So having a look at those, those facts and having a look at that evidence and so much more evidence, the weight of evidence, it became very apparent to me why those opposite and why the Leader of the Opposition so staunchly support their trade union mates and their supporters. It is a story of utter shame. And sometimes I don't know how those opposite can possibly still support the trade unions, knowing exactly what the trade unions are doing to their workers. It's very clear when you can't discredit the facts, you try and discredit the man. And that is exactly what is happening now with the Royal Commission. Deny, attack, defend. Deny, attack, defend. Deny, attack, offend. And if they concentrate on discrediting the Commission enough, you're hoping that all of this, these facts will disappear. Well, let me tell you what, they will not disappear. They will not disappear, no matter how hard, no matter how hard you scream in this chamber. Deny, attack, defend. But the facts are here and the evidence is very, very clear. So what are the changes you're so opposed to? The government is, make, has made, is making changes to remove unnecessary disclosure requirements on officers and organisations that were first included by the previous government, 2012 amendments to the Fair Work Registered Organisations Act. These changes will ensure only disclosing officers, those whose duty relate to financial management of the organisations, must disclose their material personal interests. Officers no longer need to disclose the material personal interests of their relatives. This bill now also ensures that financial officers with relevant experience can apply to the Registered Organisations Commissioner for an exemption. These are all issues that were identified by Labor as problems. They are problems that exist in the law that stands today. They acknowledged it. They know it's still the case. They are problems created by Labor yet again, and we will fix them with this bill. Acting Deputy uh, President. There is a pressing need for this bill and for the establishment of a registered organisations commission to protect union members and protect the funds that come out of their hard-earned pay. Because, as we have seen time after time and again and again, out of the Royal Commission and elsewhere, that 
something has to change. Somebody has to stand up for these workers, and this it is for all of those reasons that I support this bill.